Okay, this is, uh, I gotta mention that this is uh, an encaustic. It's uh, a black and white print. I always make my own prints. I do all the darker work always. But in this case, my wife hand paints into the photograph. And, uh, you know, too often there's a kind of a, a very, it's a history of aesthetic poverty that photographs are painted and very rarely are they painted in, in a very aesthetic way. And she does this. And um, I do the photography, my own printing always. And uh, in this case, there's a very, very limited edition, maybe three in this case, of, of an image like this. And uh, there's always a history of the print and the meaning of, and the reason for the print. In this case, the woman who is the subject uh, was born without legs. All right. And um, it's based on uh, Las Meninas by Velazquez in a very, very distant way. Okay. From the Velazquez. Uh, but it's, uh, it's kind of a, a modified uh, connection to the original uh, Velasquez piece, but I, I like art history, I like history in general, especially aesthetic history. And uh, when I put a photograph together, it's, it's made with a lot of drawings and changes until I know it's the way to proceed, and I get the models and uh, get the, the interior, and then design the photograph, put people in it, and then uh, uh, I do my own printing, and always and uh, this particular piece I think is, is very very strong and uh, it's my, my work even though uh, a lot of times the subject matter is is violent or, or maybe has the the possibility of violence uh, it's not it, it's it's about the particular aesthetic of each part working together and uh, I spent a, a lot of time basically composing the image in my mind first. I make sketches and then... And about uh, how long does that take? Is it, are you like, do you have, does it come to you in a dream? No, no, it's several, it's several weeks, sometimes a month or so, uh, between the uh, origination and, and the actual shot. And then the printing, I do myself, of course, and that is uh, when it's, you know, you make the contact prints, you choose the negative, and that's it. Uh, that's the beginning, but it's, uh, I make small additions, and uh, in, this, in this case, my wife has always applied the paint to the image. Uh, and I think that uh, if this were just a black and white tone print the way I make them, it would be fine, but I think it's finer with the color. Okay. It's a, a lot more uh, real to what happened. She was there during the shot. Right. In fact, she actually pressed the camera shutter because I'm in the photograph. Oh, I'm Velasquez. That's me. Check you out. <laughs> Can you talk about your early beginnings in the sense of uh, where I read where you witnessed a, a, a car accident and, the, and that influence on your work? Well, uh, you know, I used to start my talks with with uh, that, and sure, yeah, that was a very, very powerful experience, and um, uh, it, it could have fucked me up, but actually it didn't. It, I was engaged in the power of uh, death, and what death does to people. There's nothing as, as uh, sad and, and, and horrific as especially a young person dying in a very violent way. And uh, uh, that to me is, has always been the connection between my work. Uh, a lot of my work, even this work, I consider this, this little girl not having, she was born without legs, a form of death or dying. Uh, and, and she'll never touch the ground on her own. And uh, even to put her on this, which I designed, uh, a friend of mine, a sculptor had made this uh, for the photograph. 
she had to be lifted onto, onto this piece. And uh, she was perfect. I, I told her the reason for the photograph, the reason for her being on the photograph, was the fact that she was the center. She was the, she was the, the um, center of this piece that every person, every form, uh, orbited around her. And uh, it, it's based on uh, a lot of, actually several, art historical references, which I like to combine, because I love history. Art history? Art, art history, history in general? No, art history, mm -hmm. especially, because uh, uh, I've always read about different painters, different sculptors, different photographers, uh, because you have to know your antecedents. And uh, in this case, of course, I obviously don't, I don't actually replicate anything, but I suggest things. In this case, there are five or six different things going on. But um, did, was it, was your, did your voice come to you when you were young or did it develop over time? Can we, can we step over here, over to this, to a second piece? Oh, oh okay. The kiss? Yep. Right. This is probably my uh, <laughs> most famous photograph. And uh, what had happened is that uh, I was working with this uh, anatomist and the University of New Mexico and uh, it just so happened that this old man's head was removed from the body for scientific reasons and then it was cut in half and, uh, and that to show the inside of, of the face and skull etc. And when I saw this laying down, I said, I've got to join these two together. So uh, I, I'm so uh, connected to this piece that um, a lot of people get it wrong. They think, and it's, it's sad that I manipulate these things optically or physically. No, uh, I just took the two parts and made them kiss. Mm -hmm. And I first put it in a background, which I know would work. It's a gray-black velvet I used a lot at the time. And uh, the lighting is very, very simple, very direct. And uh, it was just called uh, La Bousse of the Kiss. And uh, I was thrilled uh, to make this because everything along the way happened so beautifully. And, and with such uh, perfection. And uh, I think I printed out this whole edition, uh, six over 15, I don't, know. I don't remember, I have to check my records. But uh, I think this is one of my most important works. So can you talk about your voice and has it been consistent over time or has it changed? Has your subject matter of death and atrocity and fantasy has that changed over time? Or? No, it, it just, it, it basically, things happen to me. I meet people, or I'm in the situations at, at like the University of New Mexico, where I, I met the man who basically uh, was in charge of the laboratory mm -hmm. of, of cadavers and whatever, for research, medical research. And uh, this was a, a particular uh, head that was removed. It looks very, very violent. Uh, instead of just cutting it off, it was it was like it's pulled off the bodies. I didn't know what happened. I don't. So these are two actual heads. No, it's one head. Uh huh. It's one head of a man that's cut in half. Oh my God! So it's one actual cadaver head right. that's been cut in half to and then to, uh, joined together in a kiss. And it's but it's the same person. Yes. I did not see that. Yeah. And that's what people mostly get wrong. Well, you can't blame them, you know, but I mean, the hairline's the same, uh, the eyes look different, but when you're old, uh, things are, are... It looks like two different people. Yeah. So, the last piece I want to talk to you about is this piece right over here, um, the profile piece um, right here. A harvest. This is called Harvest, and it was made in Philadelphia at the Mutter Museum. And uh, it's a museum of medical um, 
medical forms. Uh, and this particular piece, the face is uh, from France. It's made of wax. And basically, it's, it's there. It's all there. And I modified it with fruit and whatever. <coughs> the lighting and the way I printed it uh, changed it uh, a lot. Uh, but uh, the fact that it's called Harvest, it's, it's like um, this is a person who is, uh, in, in my case, a symbol of the embodiment of nature. Now, that person's dead, but it symbolizes the fact that nature is coming from the soil, its fruit, its vegetation, whatever, and then it dies off on its own. If we didn't... In, in, you know, pick the fruit or eat, eat, eat the, the vegetables or whatever as food. And uh, I was able to actually make this photograph on the desk of the curator. Wow. Uh, who said, uh, you can only make this photograph and I have to look at what you're going to do. So do it on my desk. <laughs> so uh, I did. I, I, I got this idea. I got these... Uh, different vegetable, avocado, what, what do you call that, avocado? I don't think it is. And uh, these things, these onions, yep. and uh, some other things, other fruits. And this is an, an actual face? No, it's not, it's wax. Oh, it's wax, okay, got you. You know, it's a sculpture, it's made in France, but it's a medical sculpture that shows all this, the, the uh, opening of, of uh, the parts of the body that okay. basically... because it looks so real. Well, it is real. Yeah, I mean, in the sense of like beyond wax, like it's yeah, like okay, gotcha. yeah, because it's made in France in like the 1880s. Wow, when people did things meticulously. And so, and do you keep these pieces? Oh no, no, it's not my piece. It was in a collection. Okay. Uh, in a medical uh, museum. But I mean, like with all this edition, like after you've created this, does you just kind of archive it once the photo is taken? No, no. Once it's taken. I, I choose, you know, the, the, the best negative after I make the contact prints, and I print it. Okay. And uh, I, I do these different things, too. Okay. Uh, I, I realize that, I'm in this case, I made um, a smaller edition, and it's a bigger edition, too. And, and I really print out the whole edition. And the last question I have is, throughout your career, what has been the most important lesson you've learned from your work? Uh, the fact that uh, I'm very good with what I do. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate your time. Thank you. And I'm being humble. Yeah. I'm just hoping to just just really, really have fun today. This office party that we're having. <laughs> yeah, man. So let's get right into it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm.